Hey folks, today's video is brought to you by Valvoline, America's very first motor oil brand. For over 150 years, they have been innovating in the world of motor oil, from the first synthetic, to the first high mileage, to the very first racing oil. Valvoline has continually found new and novel ways to extend the life of your engine. Today we're talking about Valvoline Full Synthetic Extended Protection, and this is for the cars belonging to severe drivers. Now you may not think you're a severe driver, but if you drive in very hot or cold climates, you drive fully loaded down vehicles, you run your sports car hard in the canyons, maybe you've got a turbocharged engine, or maybe you've got a very short commute where the engine doesn't warm up all the way, guess what? You're a severe driver and you need this. People like Chris Forsberg and his team of drifters, my friend Freddie Tavares, Hernandez, Rob Dom, TJ Hunt, Gears and Gasoline, and more, all trust their cars to Valvoline Extended Protection because these are some severe drivers. And it's not all about old school combustion either. Valvoline is the number one supplier for EV battery fluids, meaning their 150 year history is bound to extend far into the future. Valvoline is the only motor oil brand with its own engine testing lab where they can run specialized tests and standardized tests to ensure that the oil you put in your car has been properly put through its paces and verified by the experts. So head to your local auto parts store and pick up some Valvoline for your car today. Hey folks, welcome to the middle of the desert. It is a beautiful uh, fall morning out here. Great, great light. Yeah. Great, uh, great place to be actually. We got, we got a really silly vehicle. Uh, today, uh, the Johnny Lieberman favorite, he came on the podcast and was saying, oh, you gotta, you gotta do it, you gotta yeah. do it, you gotta do it. And here we are with the uh, Jeep Wrangler Rubicon 392. 390 cubic inches of die hard Merca. 6.4 liters, man. Die hard Don't Merca. Get up and get out of there. And, uh, you know, this thing leaves me uh, very conflicted. Because, <laughs> Why? <laughs> because it is very stupid. It provides no practical purpose whatsoever. And yet, I love it. Yeah, I feel exactly the same way. Yeah. Uh, 6.4 liter V8 in a Wrangler, uh, 470 horsepower at 6,000 RPM, 470 torque at uh, 4,300 RPM. It weighs 5,259 pounds. Um, Full-time four-wheel drive with a manually selectable low range. Zero to 60, four seconds flat. <laughs> That's nuts. Quarter mile, 12.9 at 104. Um, we just got out of an RS5 that runs a quarter in 11 to yeah, 12. So yeah. this is not that far behind yeah, an in, RS vehicle. In terms of practical practical purposes, not that far behind. This one has the Extreme Recon Pack, which comes with 35-inch BFGs, a one and a half inch lift over the regular Rubicon. Well, because the, the regular 392 Rubicon is already lifted from the right. standard Rubicon. Yes. Yeah. And so uh, this one has even more. Uh, the hood uh, is shared with the Gladiator Mojave, but it has a functional hood scoop system. Yes, it does. With this really crazy water diverting thing. So if you were to drive into a river and you have up to 15 gallons of water per minute could go into that hole in the and hood. it will it will it will get rid of it before it goes into the intake it'll like, sidebar it. yeah and you could go into 32 inches of water with this thing but what's cool is that the the front hood scoop helps cool the engine it's yes. not an air in, it's part of the air intake but it's not primarily the intake but if it gets clogged with mud or snow or whatever you still have a secondary intake that can run the engine fine it's a very complicated it, system it is but when you look under the hood it's pretty cool it's, it's all these yeah. waterfall systems yeah and it basically just has these trap doors for water before they get to the actual intake box it's neat yeah, it's like a it's a it's a pretty ingenious solution to um, the what problem. Could be a of, catastrophic and expensive <laughs> problem, <laughs> right? Right. Uh, in order to handle the power, you also got a reinforced chassis, uh, yep. larger rear brakes, uh, and Fox shocks. So it'll ride a little different than the other uh, the other uh, Jeeps as well. And of course, a a quad exhaust system, which is um, loud. It's amazing. It is. It lets them know you're coming. When you start this thing, it is incredible. It, and this thing has like no sound deadening, in my opinion. Yeah. So you hear every bit of it, but it's really fun. It is. It is one of the most aggressive cold starts 
Uh, and, uh, and also, this, not exclusive to the 392, but as far as I know, first ever power top on a Jeep. We're going to close our full length uh, power canvas top. That is amazing. Which I really like. I like this solution way, way more than I like the uh, removable hard roof panels that you then have to store in the back. Those were right. okay, but this is fabulous. Yeah, I mean, if, if you know, this is probably more expensive, more complicated, but it gives you a lot more options. Right. Uh, so, we'll do a little tarmac, and then we'll do a little dirt. And we're just, let's just get straight into it. I'll just go, I'll just brake booster, and we'll just go, huh? Okay. The twist in the chest. Oh, it's awesome. It's like a muscle car. It's just like... Rrr, rrr, rrr. It's so loud. Holy, it is holy obscenely crap. loud. You know what, though? Uh, there are, we, we all complained about the people that own chargers that drive around really loud and make noise. Yes. But I forgot that if I owned a car that I liked the sound of this much, I would do that, too. I would. I feel, I, did. I feel a little guilty driving it around, but with the exhaust open. With it closed, it's okay. With it open, I'm like, I am just a douche. Well, the good news is that if you floor it, even with the exhaust closed, it opens. <laughs> so then you yeah. make all the noise. True. Uh, but it, there's not a lot of vehicles on the road today that truly feel overpowered. Yeah. This is one of them. And and the, the, the way I'm able to accelerate away from traffic lights, but then not quite able to brake in or time turn. for the next traffic light. Yeah, we're still talking about a Wrangler. Plus, it's an off-road spec Wrangler with even bigger tires and an even higher lift. The power serves very little practical purpose. Well, I think uh, what highlights physics a lot for me is when you watch a trophy truck like yeah. they're 800 horsepower and then when they hit the brakes the whole thing dives right. and it looks really unsafe for about three minutes while it slows down that's what I think of with this thing it, it is a hoot and it is fast but but between the what I think is pretty bad steering feel and on the road for me this rides like there's 100 PSI in the tires yeah. it feels really stiff and it almost skitters across the ground so I never really felt settled with the power pretty bad steering feel is generous the steering feel is abysmal in this thing and the suspension does ride better than other Jeeps. I will I will give them that. The suspension, especially on this fire road, I, it rides better than other Jeeps, and even it rides better than the Bronco that we had. But it's got Fox shocks, so you would compare it to the, the Bronco Sasquatch, right. which we have not we tried not have, yet. Correct. We had the, the regular one. Yeah, we uh, had the Outer Banks, which Trail. is like the fancy Bronco but with the pretty simple shocks, which, as you said, did not ride good at all on a, on a forest road. This is floating pretty well. It's this not exactly good. like a Baja truck, but it's pretty good. No, but, but for a Wrangler, you wouldn't really normally be doing this kind of, you know, medium to high speed washboardy stuff. True. But with the longer wheelbase, with the Fox shocks and the 35s, and the easy torque of the motor, it's something you might be interested in for once. Let's see. It, it, it promotes hooning in a way that a Jeep never has, uh, I would say. I've driven somewhere uh, without a destination or really anything. So let's go, oh, let's, uh, let's, uh, let's spin around okay. and go find some articulation and yeah. some other Jeep. Let's things. test that. This does have slightly different suspension geometry than the V6 Rubicon. I don't know what they changed. I know they had to change it because to fit that engine, that's what you have to do. It, it, even on a sandy wash, if you smash the throttle, it gets up and goes. Well, it's, I mean, the full-time four-wheel drive is pulling at all the corners. Um, and you can lock the rear diff if you want. So the off-road plus mode, it basically locks the rear diff, but it and it's meant for higher speed driving. Yeah. It's basically, it, it sounds like they're trying to say it's a desert driving mode. Yeah, they're trying really to split the that. difference. Yeah. You know, with a, a sort of Baja style, style driving mode. I mean, this thing is so cool. It has so much personality. I think it looks great. I think this color is there's an a, exceptional blue. There is a uh, there's a, a rig coming. An this RV way. head. Well, we can go that We're way. We go right. Let's go, go that way. Right. Is that a trail? It is now. Yeah. Yeah, it's a trail. There's tire mark. Tire we marks. meant to go. We meant to kind of go over here. 
I, I yeah, we're in, there's other tire marks. We're not the first people through here. The, well, the, the markings in this area, uh, there's not a lot of signage, and I the trail map for this particular location that will remain undisclosed is also incredibly vague. I mean, I like that this I you know things I like about jeeps for off roading pretty narrow, you know, so they're easy to squeeze through uh, trails. Let's just go. Yeah. Oh, look at that. That's Don't awesome. There. I'm not going to that bowl. That's a, yeah. And the turning radius for this thing, I mean, it's like a bicycle. It, yeah. It has Ooh. such an amazing turning radius. Great approach and departure angles. You can drive what seems like straight up walls, uh, which is good. And maybe if you just were to just kind of do a little... I mean, that sound and a dirt slide, I mean, that is just a wonderful marriage. But it doesn't have the, the width of a Raptor, so it doesn't have that stability. You know, it feels like I could roll it. It does. It does a little <laughs> bit. On the way up here, I had that thought. I was like, yeah. I hope we don't do that. Yeah, no, you wouldn't. But you can, I mean, you can, even with all-wheel drive, just turn the wheel and smash the throttle and get oversteer. It's clearly a rear-biased system, yes. right? Yes. Um, and the torque, like 75% of the torque comes on just I'm above idle, which is good uh, for up, uh, everything. Up, I don't want to go toward the, the Green Mountain. I don't think we have anything to prove with this vehicle in terms of, like, oh, it can get up something because we know Jeeps can get up things, and a Jeep with 35s can get up things. This is not going to be a surprise to anybody. That's very true. Um, uh, and this Jeep probably has more skill at off roading than we do when it comes to. You know, real four wheeling and boulder stuff. Sure, so there's going to be some tough guys that that are that are not going to be impressed with what we're doing here. Well, let's talk about what, what do we not like about this thing. I mean, oh. as, as I said, because all these doors are removable and oh. fairly lightweight, it's pretty loud on the road. I mean, you hear echoes. I honestly thought the rear window was down most of the time I drove this around the street. <laughs> the Alpine stereo is pretty decent. There's a sub in the back. It covers up a lot. Uh, you know, you can crank it. And, and you can still hear music and driving up here on the highway with the cruise control set. Uh, it's got radar cruise, which is nice. You know, I was able to listen to a podcast on, although I had to turn the volume up pretty high, it did come through clear. Mm -hmm. If you were doing a lot of Bluetooth phone calls, it's maybe suboptimal. Right. That's why uh, I asked if you would drive this back down because right. I have some calls to make. Right. Also, although I can stretch my left leg straight all the way out, mm -hmm. my right leg, the, 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 the pedals are like, you know, I, it's like this. It's mismatched. And oh. so, so after a long drive, I, I'm a little tweaked to the side, actually. So if you were tall and you were really thinking about doing a lot of long road trips, that may be something to consider. There's not a ton of leg room. Well, although the trans tunnel is yeah. intruding, even on this side, right. a lot. I think Zach should drive for a second. I can't take all the driving. If you try off-road plus. Sure. What is that? You think that does? It locks the rear differential. Oh. Oh, we were doing... We did that without doing that. Four-wheel drive, high, off-road, active. Oh. So Maybe... Then, although I could... I was. I could have been doing better donuts. Is see that if, what you're saying? Let's roosters both now. Yeah. <laughs> How do you not love everything about that? Oh my God! As much of like a oh, oh. eco-friendly hippie I am, that is just such a good time. Right. <laughs> Which brings up a good point. Uh, I averaged I averaged 10, <laughs> 10 miles per gallon in the city with this, and eleven and a half for most of the highway oh, drive. Oh my God! We're getting one now. It is so inefficient. And and the inefficiency <laughs> has so little of a practical purpose. And at the same time, it's definitely the best Wrangler ever. Well, yeah, I mean, it's the, this is the most exciting Wrangler ever. Yeah. I think Wranglers are normally like a Leatherman, yeah. where it's like, hey, it can do all these things. And you're like, okay, you're giving me a tool for, yeah. for a gift. It's not, there's no like real excitement to it. It can just take you places. This gives you shots of adrenaline and excitement. Yeah. A Wrangler's never had an exciting powertrain ever. No. It's that they've had functional ones, you know, but but they've always been sort of practical and, and useful for the for the job. But like when we drove the, the Mach E, right, the Mach E GT, we discussed briefly how having an EV with like different power levels, 
you only notice it when you're actually using all the power. Very good the point. rest of the time, it feels exactly the same. This thing, even if you don't use all the stupid horsepower, it feels so much different from every other Jeep because of how it idles, how it sounds, yes. how that power is delivered, how, how you know, you're never at any point unaware that you've got a giant V8 here. You are aware yeah. of it 100% of the time, whereas with a fast EV, if your foot isn't on the floorboard, you are completely unaware of the extra power of it. You are always aware that you have a giant V8. You don't have to be going fast. You don't have to be on the floorboard. You can just feel that it's there all the time. Yes, the response. The response is great, and obviously, as soon as you turn it on, it reminds you and everyone you live near that you have a giant V8. Yes, my neighbors are very aware oh that this Jeep has a giant V8. It is. Oh, and the other day, I was in our bedroom in our home, which is above our garage, mm -hmm. and Hannah started it, and it just shakes the entire house. It totally it's does. So, so it crazy. Really, really does. Right. So, I mean, look, the things I don't like about it are that as as a, a lefty snowflake progressive it is it is ridiculously inefficient it's the least aerodynamic vehicle on sale today <laughs> with a very inefficient power plant and you know there's no real way to justify it in a practical way but as a car right. enthusiast right i love its silliness i love that it's is actually the nicest driving Wrangler I've ever been in. Uh, just because of the Fox shocks? Well, the Fox shocks are great. I think the wheels and tires work well, and I think the engine makes effortless torque in a nice way, even when you're not being a complete idiot about it. You know, it's just nice to drive. Right, the V6 kind of sometimes feels like a kid wearing his dad's shoes. Yeah. It's like it's it's heavy. The car is heavy, yeah. and the engine's not that strong. Yeah, and if you're going this, uh, up, like, you know, big steep hills or whatever, especially if you've been in a modified one with oversized tires, it can struggle a bit, whereas this, there's no struggle. Yeah. You know, and so, um, and it's also really expensive. Yes. You know, this is like, it's like high 70s. I think it starts in the 70s. It starts in the 70s. This one has options, like... This is a really, really expensive Wrangler. And when I tell people how much it costs, they are aghast. <laughs> yeah. And you know what? I think they're going to sell every one of them because this ticks so many boxes and answers a question that a lot of people were going, a lot of people that are in the off-road community that love Wranglers, yeah. of course, would also like V8s. Yeah. And we're also in that kind of last hurrah phase, right? Where we can see the legislation coming where stuff like this might not be allowed anymore. And so, especially, you know, Jeep and Dodge and Ram, uh, of all the brands, uh, are really leaning into their last hurrahs. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, we better shove this motor in this thing, you know, while we still can. And they also have a hybrid Wrangler, you know, and they have a six-cylinder Wrangler still. So it's not necessarily one or the other. But, um, and I'm not saying that we need to like make every Wrangler ecologically friendly, but you know, go, go, if you go back to the, to the views here, what's our fuel economy? Oh, wait. What, what, 11.8 over a week. And when I left my house this morning, it was at 10.6. So in the city, it's worse. It's, and so you brought it up by one just after, after, an, after a long a 90 highway mile drive. commute. Yeah. Yeah. So it's horrible. It's yeah. one of the least one of the least efficient vehicles that money can buy. It's so so wasteful. But well, as is usually as is often true, a very inefficient vehicle also tends to be a very fun vehicle. Sure, but this one's inefficient. Like there's other vehicles that are like let's just say a 911. If you're cruising around the city, a 911 is efficient. If you're on a racetrack, it's inefficient. Yeah, but like a Ford GT, especially the 06s, yeah. those were inefficient all the time. Sure. And those were really fun. Yeah. I, you know, it, 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 that's why I feel so conflicted I about get, it. I get it, man. Because it's fun and it's great and it is like, oh, how did you not do this before? And then you go, oof. I have really burned a lot of gas and I have really made a lot of noise. <laughs> I have not gone very far. And I've not gone very far and I've not gone all that fast either. And I definitely don't have the steering brakes or chassis to handle this if something goes wrong at the speed that something could go wrong. Man, you know, you're going to see silly. a lot of these at King of Hammers. Yeah. 
It's silly. And as a car enthusiast, I think we really like it. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. thanks to Jeep for letting us have a go. Uh, it is it is very, very silly indeed. And, well and done. if you feel like it's the last hurrah, you should probably order one now. Uh, and thanks to you guys for watching, and we'll see you later. And remember, always fight your tickets. Use code TST10 on the Off the Record app available in the Android and iOS store or go to offtherecord.com slash TST.